Hello and welcome to My Security TV and our Tech and Sec Weekly. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the Executive Editor with My Security Media. And today we're joined by Professor Dali Kafar from the Cybersecurity Hub at Macquarie University. They've been doing some research on phone scams and, identif and have identified four stages of a phone scam. Introduction, assistance, threat and payment and close. Without further ado, please welcome Dr. Dali Kafar. Dali, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. Great. Uh, we always love your research coming out of Macquarie University, and uh, you have a wide range of research too. Um, but this one's on phone scams, uh, and you've been researching the content of phone scams and the stages that uh, we go through. I hardly even answer my phone anymore unless I know the caller. Maybe the background of the research, and uh, then we'll walk through. We've got four stages that they walk through, right? So. That's this right. is really a good one for awareness uh, for the consumer and uh, those people getting hit with phone scams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, so the, maybe a little bit on the motivations behind this, really. Um, I think you mentioned a little bit, we kind of even, you know, now kind of um, hesitating to take some of these calls that we are, uh, you know, skeptical of them being um, being scam calls and, and and the fact is that we're still receiving so many of those and you know and i can i can talk uh to my personal experience here i do receive plenty of those sometimes they're funny um you know so you spend a little bit of time kind of uh, having fun and, and sometimes you're not in the mood and so you just you know reject the call or uh or don't even uh take it um it is really a huge problem and in fact you know um just the just the realization that we do receive plenty of those again in Australia you know the statistics are very clear we're at that uh, level of five to six scam calls per user per month or per individual per month in Australia this is actually sitting a little um, you know at the average value for you know developed countries as you may expect you know we do receive more than um, uh, the average of um, other countries if you like but it's kind of sitting um, you know, in the same sort of level as uh, other European countries, for example, in Germany and France and UK. And of course, Australia being an English speaking country actually attracts much more uh, scammers um, into the game um, uh, compared to other countries like US and, and Brazil. It's a different situation. You know, Brazil is, is sitting at about 24 calls, scam calls per user per wow. month and, and US is about 10. Uh, but still, um, you know, that 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 number is, is relatively high. And, and then the other really important, uh, of course, considerations of this ever-growing threat, which is the the scam, is is, is of course the uh, um, you know the volume of scams really kind of uh, increasing um, you know um, on a yearly basis. 2020, um, the the reports were showing about 100,000 reports of of scam calls to Australians, and in 2021, that was a huge increase uh, of about 50% of that. So we're, we're sitting at about 145,000 reports. And, and the volume of losses, financial losses, is also um, uh, drastically increasing. Um, I think we're going from about $50 million lost, reported lost, I should say, because that's really important to mention, to about $100 million uh, um, uh, lost to, uh, to phone scammers only in, in 2021. So, you know, the numbers are just... You know, um, well, it's creating the mind. business case. Obviously, it's creating the business case for them that they work. Um, there's a couple of things you looked at more than 100 hours of phone uh, of the scam calls right. content in terms of their their call stages. But given it's a global, what's what's their process of initiating the calls? It's all done automatically. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the technical so aspect that they're using because I think in Australia I always thought we had. Yeah, how do we, how we, why aren't we able to block this uh, and yeah. stop this? So, so, so the first thing to, to, to mention also is that, you know, we do um, uh, block um, a lot of those on the technical side of things, right? So uh, at the core of the network, lots of these scam calls get, you know, detected and get blocked. Yes, we still do. This is part of uh, sort of Telstra's cleaner pipes. Yeah, uh, you know, looking at looking at patterns of calls and you know uh, in fact you've got boxes out there literally try to identify those very unusual patterns of people calling you know hundreds if not thousands of different numbers 
uh, in, a, in a small or a short period of time. So those are ones that, you know, you'd be immediately uh, able to, to, to detect and block in a sense. Now, the technology may fail in many uh, different situations. And just the, uh, again, the observations that we still receive, plenty of those just shows that, you know, a single sort of approach to this based on some form of pattern recognition or some signature is not enough, right? So we really wanted to understand the um, uh, logic and uh, the, the sort of script and in fact, the psychological type of tricks that these scammers are trying to, uh, um, you know, to deploy um, in order to fool possible victims. That's really what we went, were intended to do with this, with this research. So we looked at uh, over 300 scam calls um, and, and transcribed them uh, using uh, natural language processing and machine learning techniques. And then what we tried to do is to essentially extract emotions, topics, subjects of the conversations, annotating all of that, uh, all of, that of course. Um, and we try to identify particular phrases or keywords used. But most importantly, what we really wanted to analyze and identify are those common transitions between the topics that may reflect steps that are taken by these scammers in their scammer, um, in, in their scam script. And sure enough, and this is, I think, the, the, the cracks of the problem, if, if you like, or the, the, the most important bit of the findings in this research, we really identified um, um, four different stages that scammers would automatically or, you know, most uh, consistently go through. And they are very sophisticated type of stages that regardless of what the victim is coming up with, and again, this is actually what we have been able to show um, in the data-driven analysis, regardless of how we would be reacting to those, they are consistently going through these four different stages. The first one is what we are calling the setup phase or the introduction. And this is actually the, the phase that most of us um, you know, or all of us really taking these calls would have identified or would have listened to uh, um, in one way or the other. This is really the phase where the scammer is introducing some sort of reason for the call. Um, and and if you look at the emotions there and, and you know, the, the, the way that they are um, putting that sort of reason for the call, it is almost consistently being in a very aggressive and hostile way, right? Coming with a very serious threat uh, whether it's kind of illegal action or, you know, um, a suspension of your bank account or suspension a position of position of authority, account. right? They're coming with a position of authority and demand. Uh, that's exactly it. So the authority, um, they're establishing that element of authority, you know, they're calling in a very official uh, way. Um, but additional to that is another very, very interesting thing that we again identified as being extremely consistent. And that actually talks to the sophistication of their scripts. He, just with in parallel with that setup, with that authority and aggressivity and hostile way of really threatening their, their, their possible victims, now they inject elements of credibility sharing uh, with their possible victims. So this is really where they will try to guess possible information by yourself. It could be really, you know, uh, what network or what telecommunication provider you have a subscription with, what is your bank. Um, you know, some elements of your age uh, or location, possible location, you know, they've got age brackets, literally, they work with. And so they try from your very first couple of words, um, they try to identify, uh, of course, your gender and, you know, elements of the day, uh, um, um, possible um, sort of age, sorry. Um, and then no matter what you say, they would move to that second stage, which we are calling assistant. And this is uh, a transition that is very, very naturally done by them, again, regardless of the topic that they, they're, they're calling you from. So they will immediately impose themselves as a helpful instructor um, um, or in a very, very uh, uh, interesting transition from being hostile and aggressive to a very polite social protocol they're establishing with yourself as, hey, we are here to help, okay? So they will even propose to um, you know, provide you with a sort of step-by-step -step guidance to navigate a, a website or uh, possibly to install a software or, you know, to provide how you could get to do a, a, a transaction if, if, the, if the element of the talk or element of the scam is about um, money transfer. Um, and that transition between setup and assistance phase is done in a very, very smooth, seemingly harmless way, right? So this, the, the most vulnerable of us would very, very likely to fall for that trap uh, because they have established that element of authority and now they're offering their help. Yeah. The third stage now becomes even more interesting. 
Um, and actually, in 98% of the cases, the assistant, uh, uh, the assistant stage would take about you know a couple of minutes. And regardless again of how you'd really be coming back to them, uh, whether you're skeptical or not, doesn't really matter. They'll again ramp up the emotions to a threat level at this at the third stage. And they're starting to, again, reinforce that threat element, just in case you forgot what you're dealing with, right? They'll yeah. like kind of come back again with this sort of arrest warrant or jail or, you know, all the negative consequences that you may end up having if you don't listen to them. And very importantly, at this stage, they're now introducing the element of time pressure. So they really would like you, uh, they would like to prevent you from, from thinking this through. Right. So that consideration of time pressure, you having to make a call right now, right in this call is consistent through the 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 um, sophisticated script that they're running. And the fourth stage is obviously, um, you know, the stage where they you know, this is really their throughput, literally where they are you know, intended to get you to make that payment or to make that transaction or to install that software, the malicious software on your device. This is a stage where things become. Uh, very, very um, um, less organized and less structured from the scammer point of view, because they're really interested in in finishing the call and finishing the transaction. And this is really where they would assess whether, you know, they do have a possible victim or not, right? So at this stage, now they're really kind of taking care of, um, um, you know, t uh, assessing what you would, what your reaction is, right? And, and assessing whether you'd fall for this, uh, for their scam or not. This is a stage where, um, you know, they're very likely to uh, hang up if they feel that you're not the right person. Okay. So if you really make it to this fourth stage, um, and then you can show that, you know, you're resistant to their calls and to their threats, and you're resistant to that element of time pressure, you're very likely to not hear from them again. Uh, but if they feel that you know you're vulnerable at this stage, this is where they will insist and uh, you know go to that element of credit card payment or whatever it is. Uh, what type and, of? Um, I mean, do they make a, a bit of a judgment on the run in terms of what they want you to pay, or did you find any consistency what? in what they're trying to sort of a bit like what we've seen yeah. in ransomware, where they start with the sort of the low level and then it actually gets higher and higher? But yeah, uh, so yeah, it's, it's it's yeah that that element of. Um, non-structure is literally captured here with the with their own judgment and assessment of how good of a victim you are or not, literally, right? Yeah. So um, there, there is absolutely no consistency in this fourth stage. Right. Right? This is literally a kind of personalized stage for them. Um, their scripts are um, organized up to stage three, and then four is literally where um, you know they're they're getting with a sort of um, um, you know personalized menu, if you like, to you. Uh, because this is where they they would try to get the most out of you, of course, but you know um, they, they they'll try to balance the um, the likelihood of you making the payment uh, versus your skepticism or not. And of course, they're trying to maximize the, the you know the, the the fact that you would be making that payment or you would be making that that uh, uh, installation. So depending on the topic, by the way, because things are pretty much different if they're asking you to download and install that uh, remote malicious software that would make make it possible for them to control your device. Uh, if it's really about a kind of uh, financial transactions, things are different, of course, there, depending on the topic, you know, if they're coming with a threat of tax office, um, they, they probably would be asking for more uh, than if they were asking for some, you know, a voucher because they, they, they pretend to be, um, you know, your, your bank that needs some uh, fees for a possible transactions or, or, or so at the end like of the day it may not just be an immediate payment but it may just be the malicious software for them to then take it to another level and I, this is a sort of yeah. a, a larger supply chain from a scammer's viewpoint too then they might on sell that okay we've got a victim we've now got some software on their device and we can move that up and sell that uh, on yeah. sale, then, right? That 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 software installation is 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 obviously the very first step in in their social engineering um, you know process to make you install um, you know a, a software that would make it possible for them to control your device and then literally uh, have a ransomware that would follow up. So that's really the very first stage for them being uh, or installing the ransomware. So you know next day you, what will happen the next uh, uh, the next few hours is that you'll end up 
um, not being in a position to um, to access your data and so on, and you'll find yourself kind of being caught in that ransomware. And this is where you receive that other call or that email that basically says, "Hey, um, you know, we've got control of your of your phone, of your uh, or, or of your uh, uh, device, laptop, and others." Uh, and that's well, a different well, stage. Yeah, look, well done on on the research. You've done quite a innovative way that you've done it. Three hundred scam calls published on YouTube, and then as you say, you transcri- had those transcribed and ran some uh, neural linguistic programming over the top of that and, and analyzed that. As you mentioned, there was some 5,000 to 9,000 words per sort of for a one hour of audio. So there's a quite data rich there, but I think once you bring it out into the basics, it's really good for consumer awareness or anyone's awareness uh, in terms of this. We'll have the, you've, this is on the Lighthouse, Macquarie University's Lighthouse page. We'll have the link there, but thank you so much, Dali. You've always coming up with uh, interesting sort of takeaways. That's one aspect with your research. You always kind of have a, a, a ready application of the outcomes and the findings. So uh, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much, Chris. Dali, thank you. Professor Dali Kafar, Executive Director with Macquarie University Cybersecurity Hub. Great to see you again, mate. Thank you. See ya.